Hafide and welcome home. I am Michelle Apiak and I invite you to join us as we take a look at condominiums and townhomes on the market here on Guam. We will also sit with Remax Realty Group principal broker Chris Guerrero as he takes us through home buying process after you find that dream home. We will sit with a home mortgage expert from the Bank of Guam on the next steps to take after an offer is submitted on a home or property. Welcome home. We're here at the Bank of Guam. We'll talk to Anne as we further discuss the process to take after you found that home. Hi Anne. Hi Michelle. So I'm back and you know based on our last conversation, our last talk, you actually guided me through the you know the basics of where to start. Correct. So now I'm back and you know I wanted to see um, what steps to take after I've already found a home uh, given the pre-qualification amount that uh, you know, I had to work with. So what happens next? Well, the next step would basically be if you decided on a home, you that's the home you'd like to purchase, it's best that you work with your realtor or if it, you're going through the seller directly, then you would want to make an offer. And depending on what amount you feel is right, um, then you should make that offer and hope that the seller um, will agree to that offer. And once the offer is made and accepted by both you and the seller, then it would be best at that point to submit your application to the bank or any other financial institution to determine if you'd be approved for that, um, that purchase. Okay, and with that being said, what if the seller doesn't accept my offer? What can I do? Well, I think that's where um, your realtor plays an important part in trying to determine um, what would be the next offer or option for you because they basically will be your they are the middle point, uh, person in this um, transaction when, it when it's between the buyer and the seller because they're taking your offer to the seller and they're making that they're, they're taking it and negotiating if the seller does not make the off uh, accept your offer then they may counter offer make another offer and you may then decide that may be something you're willing to take. So it really is, it's a negotiation between you and the seller with of course your realtor working uh, for you to try and get you the house. How long does it usually take, I mean the negotiation process? I mean uh, just, a, just a basic um, amount of time like before a deal is actually closed or before a seller actually make uh, accepts your yeah. offer? Um, you know, it really depends um, because if the seller says, I'm willing to accept your offer based on these conditions, he may give you one, two days to accept it or he may give you 10 days to accept the counter. So it really depends on the negotiations that you and the seller work, uh, work on. So it's hard to say. Okay, I see. Um, does the seller or the buyer have to fork out the closing cost? The, in most cases, I would advise the buyer to be prepared for the closing costs uh, because it's your, typically it's your responsibility as a buyer to be prepared for all fees associated with the transaction. However, you can actually incorporate maybe a portion of the closing costs as part of your purchase agreement okay. but again that that is in, involves the negotiation mm -hmm. with the seller and if you were also looking at assistance in closing costs the government basically has a program mm -hmm. through Guam Housing Corporation to assist first-time home buyers at, for down payment and closing costs up to ten thousand okay. dollars or four percent of the total transaction so long as the total transaction doesn't exceed 250000 I see. So you would want to go to Guam Housing to get more information as on that grant in, uh, program. So okay. you can see if you'd be able to um, take advantage of that. Okay, and this is completely different from the, uh, the, 
the loan application itself, right? Correct. It's okay. a separate application, but the bank, most lenders um, do participate w in the program with Guam Housing, So, but it is a separate transaction. And the grant is not, you're not required to pay it back. Okay unless you sell the home within a five-year period. So there's conditions, but if you meet all those conditions, then you basically don't have to pay the grant. But I would advise you to visit Guam Housing and get more information on the different products they have, the grants. They also have loan products that the lender, the bank, um, can participate and basically incorporate as part of your loan package with us. Okay, good to know. Um, you know, there's something that I see on TV, like a lot of the shows that happen, uh, about inspections. The home needs to be uh, inspected. Why does that need to be done? Well, the homes, I would recommend um, the home to be, that you're looking at buying to be inspected because you don't know what the issues are. Mm -hmm. You're not a certified um, structural engineer. You're not a plumber. You're not a pest inspector. Mm -hmm. So it's best to know beforehand mm -hmm. what the issues, if there are any issues, uh, so you could address that with the seller before monies are transferred. Okay. It's not a requirement for most loans, but it's highly recommended to just protect you okay. uh, as the future homeowner of that property. I see. And who handles the inspection? Is that something that we, you know, ask the seller, you know, it's kind of like, do they provide that to us say okay you know we'll show you what's really wrong or do can we independently do that ourselves i would advise you to independently get a, an inspector to do it okay um, again it's all a part of your negotiation so if your negotiation says the seller is going to handle the inspections then you don't have to worry about those fees but typically um, the inspectors won't Get, I mean, the, the sellers won't be able to give you those inspections because it's added cost to them. Sure, yeah. But for you as the home buyer, I would suggest you get one uh, independently and that will be an additional cost to your transaction. Okay. Oh, so that can be in, in the, the purchase agreement or? Oh, okay. correct. You can incorporate that as part of your negotiation. If you want the seller to pay for it, then the seller will pay for it if the, he accepts that mm. condition. Now he may counter offer and say, I don't want to pay those inspections. So if you are insistent in getting an inspection, you would have to ensure that you account for that expense. I see. Okay. Um, was there any, you know, any other uh, advice you can give us or anything you want to add to this? this portion of our segment? I guess because you've already found a home and you were looking at uh, purchasing that particular home, it's best to work with your realtor so you can get the best deal. They really will be your voice to the seller's agent or to the seller directly to get the home at the price you want. So at this stage, it would be best to work with your realtor to get all those things squared away. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Anne, for all your help again. No problem. Uh, once you've, uh, they've accepted your offer, please come back and we can start the application process. Okay, great. Welcome home. Before the break, we sat with Anne with the Bank of Guam to discuss what goes on after I make an offer to a seller. She shared the financial institution aspect of this segment of buying a home. Right now though, we will get the realtor standpoint on what goes on after I make an offer on a home. Hi Chris. Hi. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for sitting with us again. And this time we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the fun stuff. So after I've seen all the homes, after you showed me some homes, I've picked the one I want and um, I made an offer and the seller approves. So can you tell me what happens next? What's the first step? Usually the first step after you get your approval, uh, you go straight to the bank and, and apply, bring your check stubs, your bank statements, your BOEs, your W-2s, and apply as soon as possible because you're under a timeline. Once you sign, once, this, once the contract is accepted, then you, the timeline starts. So if you have a 45 day or 60 day timeline to, to close the, the loan, then you need every day you, you can to uh, 
to process that. Okay. So a different scenario, Chris. Seller didn't like my offer, but I still really, really want the home. What can I do? Usually the seller would not accept your offer based on price, um, conditions, or, or probably even terms. When it's price, you know, it, it, it's just a matter of working with the seller, negotiating to try and get to a middle ground. Sometimes sellers aren't as negotiable, you know, not, not, there, there can be a too low. And then at the same time, you also don't want to offer too low where it's insulting as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to be reasonable when you, when you, if you do want to try and negotiate to get the seller to even try and go that route. Uh, another thing would be uh, the terms. Let's say uh, you you need you gave 30 days to close, but the seller is not moving for another two to three months, and they need a little longer, so they might need a little more time as well. So timelines and, and terms do do play um, a factor as well as what's included in the in the property. Sometimes the um, you see when you walk into a house and you see a refrigerator or stove and, and air cons, not, it's not all the time that it, it's included. You know, even though when we write up the offer, we might put refrigerator, stove, and air cons, uh, the seller could say, hey, that's not, that, sorry, that's not included, or the furniture in there is, isn't included either. So uh, we're, we're kind of having problems with your offer because we're not going to include certain things. Okay. Um, speaking of inclusions though, um, am I to assume that when you show me homes, right, and, and there's furniture and appliances, uh, are those meant for just staging or basically can I assume that those are included without even asking? Without asking, sometimes it is. Okay. You know, usually we would, as your agent, would call the seller's agent or the seller themselves and ask to see if it is included or not. If it is included, then of course we would put it in the contract. It's always advisable to put it in writing so that there isn't anything left that's not certain to say, hey, I don't know if this is included or not. And then, you know, it, 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 for some reason, it's either left there or not left there and you don't want it or you want it. So, Chris, when the offer is accepted, sometimes there's, uh, you know, some changes, you know, that a, a buyer might have. So is there room or some time to make some changes to the contract? Normally, when an offer is placed and, and then it's accepted and money is put down, then it becomes a legally binding contract. It's enforceable in court. But there are times when you, you, do, when you do need changes, as long as it's mutually agreeable on both parties, okay. then, then it is acceptable as long as it's also put in writing. Okay. So if we need more time to do an inspection or we need more time for bank processing and our timeline's coming up close, we need an extension doesn't mean that we can't, you know, ask the seller, Mr. Seller, we need an extension, can, you know, we extend till this, put it in writing, sign it, have it sent, sign back, and then you're clear. Okay, so what are some changes that might be allowed? Because I know that a huge decision of a change, change of mind, like, no, I, I guess I don't want the house. I mean, that's a no, right? When it, comes to, when it comes to not wanting the house anymore and you're in a binding contract, yeah. Uh, that in turn gets very, very tricky because technically, you know, the seller can actually force you to to buy the house in, from court. You know? Okay. It is possible that that happens. Usually, there are certain contingencies in the contract mm -hmm. that allow you to get out if in case, like, let's say we do an inspection and we find a $10,000 earthquake crack that, that's, you know, that you uh, need to address and the seller says, no, I don't want to take care of it. And then the buyer says, no, I don't want to take care of it. Then, you know, then, then, you know, the deal is dead because it wasn't addressed. And, you, you know, that's one way where, you know, the contract can be void, you know, or canceled because of it. But if for some reason the, all the inspections pass, you know, you know, say you do plumbing, structural, electrical, and termite inspections, whether they're required or not. Mm -hmm. your, your bank loan is good, you got a loan approval letter, it appraised, it appraised more than what the purchase price is, and you get to the closing table and you're like, I don't want to buy it anymore, mm -hmm. then actually the seller can actually keep your earnest money deposit and take you to court and, and mm. force you to buy it. Interesting. At the same time though, the, the, the contract is legally binding to where the, if the seller gets a $500,000 cash offer closing in three days and you're under contract, and you fulfilled everything within your your responsibilities to do, and you say, okay, Mr. Seller, it's now time for you to, to do your part. Mm -hmm. And the seller says, I don't want to sell it. I got a $500,000 offer. 
oh, then, then you can actually take the seller to court and force oh. them to sell it to you. So it works both ways. Okay. It doesn't, it, the contract's not meant to, to have uh, one party take advantage over another. It's meant to be, you know, to do a single purpose, which is to close on the home. And as long as the buyer and seller are mutually agreed upon to help that happen, then usually the contract goes smoothly. Hmm. Understood. Okay. Chris, okay, so thank you. I mean, you know, I understand a little bit more about, you know, all these binding agreements and stuff. It's serious stuff. So mm -hmm. that's good good information to know. Is there anything else you want to leave us with? Some, you know, helpful advice, tips for first time home buyers? Well, for first time home buyers, um, first off, the interest rate is great. You know, at 3.8, 3 right now, I believe we're at 3.8, 3.9. Uh, back in the 80s and 90s, it was 10 and 12 percent, you know, and, and once it hit 6 percent, it was already the lowest it's ever been. Now we're at three. It's still the lowest it's ever been. But that means that you can qualify for more. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the lower the interest rate, the more house you can qualify for, the more house you can buy. The higher the interest rate, the less. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's at 3 percent, if you can if you can do it, your interest um, is low. You, uh, your, your income to debt is low where it qualifies for you, you know, you're, you've been good about your finances, you've been paying, your credit's been clean for the last two years, you've had no, no 30 day, you know, uh, late payments, then usually the bank is, is great to, you know, qualify you to, to buy your first home. Okay, Chris, thanks for your time today and we'll see you again soon. All right, see you again. Thank you so much to Chris from Remax Realty Group for sharing his years of experience and knowledge with us here on Welcome Home. Still to come after the break, we will take a tour of four great condominiums and townhomes with Remax Realty Group realtor Leo Marzo. Leo starts off our tour in Upper Tumon at the Tumon Horizon Condominiums. Welcome home. Let me introduce you to a realtor with the Remax Realty Group, Leo Marzo. As mentioned earlier in the show, he will be showing us some condominiums and townhomes that are on the market today. But before we start, Leo, can you explain to us what a home, potential home buyer can expect, uh, you know, the differences between looking for a home, a townhome, or a condominium? Well, one of the biggest differences is the homeowners association fees, which usually covers um, property tax, insurance, amenities such as the swimming pool, security, okay. playground, exterior maintenance, and um, sometimes even includes utilities. Okay, there you go. Um, so tell me, where are we now? We are in Tumon Horizon Condos in Tumon. Okay. And what are you going to show me today? I'm going to show you a two bedroom, one bath, uh, 742 square feet. Condominium, okay. correct. <laughs> uh, asking price of one hundred fifteen thousand. Okay, let's see it. All right. Located right off Marine Corps Drive, this condominium unit on the second floor was recently updated with new tiles paint and a new look to the kitchen to include new appliances. This unit has a living area of 742 square feet. With a great window view that is main focal point of the unit, you can see right out to the pool common area. The compound has a coin operated laundry area, elevators, a trash chute, pavilion and pool area great for those relaxing days. This house is on the market right now for $115,000. Let's break that down to see you on monthly costs. At 4% interest with a 30-year mortgage, only principal and interest, the monthly payment will be about $549 per month, not to include the common area fee of $350. Off to our next attached home on the market, just down the street from Tumon Horizon. Hey Leo, okay, so can you tell me where we're at now? We are in Villa Isabana in Dededo. Okay. We're gonna be taking a look at a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1,400 square feet, asking price of 265,000. Okay. All right, let's go in and take a look. Okay. This two-story home is a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom, one conveniently located on the first floor. Two of the bedrooms upstairs share a balcony, while the master bedroom gets its own bathroom. The townhome has new renovated tiles throughout the home and wall tiling in the bathrooms along the updated light fixtures in all of the rooms. On the first floor, the spacious kitchen looks into the dining and living area. Off to the dining area, there is a sliding door that takes you out to a lanai for those cookouts, or just to let the kids out for some fresh air with not much to worry. The unit is going for 
breaking that down to see your possibly monthly costs based on a 4% interest rate with a 30-year mortgage, only principal and interest, this spacious townhome could be a little over $1,200 per month, not including the common area fee of $200. Off now we go to showing number three. We're at another townhome. Leo, can you tell us where, where exactly we are? We're in Las Palmas Phase 1 in Dededo. Okay. We're going to be looking at a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath, 1,300 square feet, list price of $189,500. Come on in, let's take a look. Okay. This townhome is located in the Las Palmas Phase 1 housing area in Dededo. The townhome also boasts 1,300 square feet of living space, three bedrooms upstairs with two full baths and a half bath on the ground floor. The kitchen looks out into the dining area, which leads into a gated lanai. The unit was recently upgraded with new floor tiles in the bedrooms, new carpeting on the staircase, and newly painted walls. Oh, and as an added bonus, the townhome is just a short walking distance to the playground and the community pool. The Las Palmas community is well-maintained, has security grounds 24-7, and not to mention its great location close to numerous restaurants, the airport, shopping areas, and more. This townhome is now on the market for $189,500. To break that down for you at a 4% interest rate with a 30-year mortgage, only principal and interest, this townhome in a great community could cost you just close to $905 per month. Again, this does not include the monthly homeowners association or common area fee of $325. From the northern village of Dededo to central Guam, this great condo is tucked away and centrally located in Mong Mong Totomaiti and has 1,000 square feet of living space. Okay, Leo, it looks like we're somewhere different and peaceful. Where are we now? We are in Harvest Residence in Mighty. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at a two-bedroom, two-bath, 1,000 square feet, um, list price of $165,000. Okay. okay. Come on in, let's take a look. This two-bedroom, two-bathroom has its own balcony access that overlooks a great view of central Guam. Check out the master bedroom. A tub in a shower with lightly frosted glass panels the compound is a gated entry with a pool and an elevator. This condo is a must-see and comes with a refrigerator, stackable washer and dryer, and a stove. This unit is going for $165,000. At 4% with a 30-year mortgage, only principal and interest, the monthly payment will be about $788 per month, not to include the common area fees of $137. For more information on any of these three homes, please contact REMAX Realty Group at 988-5224. Tune in next time for a look at more properties on Guam that you can call your own. Until then, thank you so much for watching this episode of Welcome Home. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please join us again for a new episode right here on this Sorensen Media Group television station. Until next time, I'm Michelle Appiag, and I'll see you at home.